dark, cold world out there. There's a time to live and a time for a man to die. There are places for dead men in the earth and the sky. Don't you venture too far now, cause you can't come back from the place where the good guys always dress in black. Awesome. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Ring Respect Radio. I am Bobby Munson, joined, as always, by the man with the angelic voice. He is Papa Smokes right there. And as you'll see, we're joined by a very special guest tonight. He is Mr. Bud Heavy. How the hell are you doing, sir? I'm living the dream, man. How about you guys? Well, we're doing great out here, living the dream here in Canada. As it starts to get colder and we're heading into the winter season. Uh, not sure what the weather's like out there, but, man, it's freezing out here opposite of that it is burning hot <laughs> where about whereabouts exactly are you from i am from florida beautiful so beautiful. yeah tampa florida i am in uh the closest you get before you're swimming in the water south nice, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so nice warm weather and lots of cold beers right correct which is speaking of that you know we had to stay <laughs> beautiful <laughs> that's what i love to see Especially from a couple of beer drinking Canadians like ourselves too. So oh, there you go. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we reached out to you because we've uh, been watching you this past year. We've been seeing you over on MLW, seeing a lot of great things. Uh, you've been a big standout for the two of us here. We wanted to get you on the show, uh, talk about that, just talk about just life in general, man. Just uh, all casual. So I'm gonna kick it over to Papa Smokes here to take the reins here, see what uh, questions he's got. Yeah, really glad to have you on, Bud. Thanks a lot for being on here, but. We'll start it out nice and easy. Uh, how did you end up getting into the professional wrestling business? What what were some of the uh, stars that you liked watching when you were younger? And just give us a little introduction. Yeah, man. Uh, the, the first time I remember knowing I wanted to be a wrestler was like I was six years old. Um, and my dad had taken me to see a WCW show. And uh, we were front row. And Ric Flair uh, was in the ring. And I just remember watching him. And I was like, dude, there's just something special here. Like, I, I didn't know what it was at the time, but I was like in love and mesmerized. And then um, as time went on, like I fell in and out of love with it, I think as we all do. Yeah. Um, but when I, when I got a little bit older, um, you know, my wife was like, hey, you've always wanted to do it. You should try it. And I was like, yeah, no, I don't know how you get into that or whatever. You know, I, I don't know. You know, because at that time, it's, it was a lot harder than it is now to find a wrestling school. They were actually really, um, really hard to find a kind of underground. I made a joke about it, like I would do it if I could. I bet I could do it. Sure enough, she found a school. Uh, just so happened to be Team 3D, which is the, the Dudley boys. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah, she sent me straight there and uh, I started training. And then that's it really, it all just started kind of as like pressure from her. Um, a joke, if you will. <laughs> And I uh, started training there. Yeah. And then Jay Lethal after that. I did a year there and then did Jay Lethal after that. And that's, that's where I'm out of. Beautiful. How, how long ago that was? Uh, how long have you been in the, in the business for? Seven years now. Awesome. Jeez. Really <laughs> Time flies, right? Yeah. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> so, uh, of course, we'll we'll get to talking about MLW, but uh, where else uh, might people f uh, find some of your work, some of your body of work that's happened in those seven years? Yeah, man, a lot of it's down here in Florida because uh, we have uh, the, the crippling death of three-hour drive to get out of our state, so most of us get stuck down here. Um, so I worked at Tampa Bay Pro Wrestling for all of my career. Um, you can find a lot of my matches there on Fight TV as well, but they have a YouTube Um Real Pro Wrestling out of Fort Myers, Florida. Um, that's been the home home. Uh, those guys have had my back since day one. And uh, I feel like it's just, it's the island of misfit toys and I seem to fit right in. Um, <laughs> and then uh, there's a bunch of other promotions around the state of Florida. Um, ACW, which used to be a WWN place, which they used to do like uh, Evolve and all that. It was under that umbrella. I've, I've wrestled there quite often. But yeah, a little bit of those places. Nice. So uh, when did the call from MLW first come about? Man, that was, <laughs> it was, it was funny. Um, 
the 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 guy that I uh, I one of the guys I trained with he he's the ring owner, and MLW just so happens to be uh, needing uh, people to aid in certain things, uh, and he was like, hey, I need your help, you know, tearing down, putting it up, and I showed up, man, and uh, I just kept showing up. So I showed up at two shows, um, and they 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 were like, I drove up to Chicago with him, and they were like, here's a dark match, and um, that's just where it all started, man. They were like, thanks for coming. Here's an opportunity. We hope you don't blow it. <laughs> well, clearly not if they keep calling you back. Yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, it's weird. Um, it, it's weird. I, I hadn't, like, I won't say I had no intention, but I had zero thought that they would use me. Um, I mean, look at me. <laughs> you know? So, but they did, so you know, I can't complain. <laughs> how about that Philly crowd at uh, – at the uh, taping for a MLW Fusion Alpha. I mean, we were we were big fans already. We really enjoyed what you've been doing so far, but that crowd was firmly behind you, man. What a great reaction. The shocker was, was I had no entrance, so they were just going to walk me out and let me, you know, it's a typical enhancement talent thing that we do, right? Yeah. But then I get out there, and somebody says my name. I'm like, yeah, hey. You know, I was like, maybe one person. That's cool. Then one more, then one more. And if you look at the video, there's a moment where I'm laughing because I have no clue what to do. Um, what's going on here? Like, they're fixing to, like, you know, I'm, I'm going to get you for this. Like, there's no way they appreciate this, you know? But they were, they were all about it, man. They, they enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, it was wild. And that feeling, man, it was, it was insane to think of it. Like, it's the 2300 arena. Like, that's – I mean, obviously, we all know the history that place holds. Um, and standing in that same arena and having them say my name. Uh, I mean, I am telling you now, I could have, you could have been like, all right, that's it. You're done. And I'd have been like, yeah, cool. I did it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> now, now, before yeah. I send it back to Papa Spoke, speaking of that night at the same time, you have got to have some of the biggest set of nuts on the planet because you not only flipped the bird to Alex Kane of all people, but with King Mo right at his side, man, I don't know anybody else on this planet who would have, the uh, the testicular fortitude, as they used to say, to do such a thing. But you, sir, <laughs> fucking a, it was awesome. Uh, I'll tell you this much: um, that kid's a fucking monster. <laughs> I'm, just, sure is. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it: um, a monster. And uh, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I paid the price. I mean, there's three more suplexes after all the ones that happened during the match. <laughs> Not to mention the kick to the back during that thing that I think I peed blood for about a week after that. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll take it over to Papa Smokes again here. Well, you were talking about uh, the Alex Kane being a monster, but we've seen you fight some other monsters in MLW. I was wondering what it's like to, uh, you know, even with some pre-match preparation and stuff, it's got to be a little bit scary to look across the ring and see you're going to be fighting Low Key or Mads Kruger. What's that feeling like to get to the ring and see them there across from you? Uh, surreal. Um, I didn't, you know, it was weird. Standing out there, I was like, yeah, cool. It's just another match. You know, it's no big deal. And then Key's music kicked. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, wait a minute. That's Loki. You know, like, it didn't set in until I was, like, out there and the lights were on. And, like, when he came through the entrance, man, I was like, uh-oh. Like, yeah. it, it, it all changed. Um, and the same kind of goes for Mads, too. Uh, I mean, like, he's, God, he's seven foot tall. You know, he's a monster. And, uh until you see him in there, you know, you could see him in the locker room, you know, in, in his lonesome little corner. Um, and he just does not seem as big as he is when he is in that ring and he's standing across from me. And obviously his eyes change, uh, both of their eyes change. I mean, Loki looks like he's come from another planet. I mean, the minute he gets in there, his whole demeanor changes and uh, he hits you like a semi truck. Obviously, I'm sure you guys saw that. Oh, yeah, he yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure does. <laughs> So outside of wrestling, though, uh, what uh, what keeps you busy? What uh, what do you like to do in your spare time? Man, uh, I got two kids. Um, I take care of my kids. It's my whole world. Um, my wife and my kids. Outside of that, man, I play a lot of video games. I'm pretty much a nerd. <laughs> so, 
yeah obviously there's godzilla behind me you know like <laughs> um so i watch uh i i play a lot of uh play a lot of games watch a lot of movies with the kids um just a lot of chilling man i try to keep it calm because the weekends are uh are hectic so i during the week i try to keep it calm you know <laughs> so are you on the road most of the time with wrestling then um yes yeah, so ever since mlw it's, uh, it's increased a lot the pandemic hurt obviously i'm not the only one that it hurt um but as of lately, it's been roughly about um, at least one show every weekend. Uh, and sometimes two, sometimes if I'm lucky, three. Um, it's hard to get out of our state, like I said earlier. So a lot of them are just within our state, three, four hour drives here and there. Some six, if you want to go all the way to Georgia line. But yeah, most of the time it's there. So this, I think all the way through November, I think we have at least one show a weekend. So yeah. yeah. So outside yeah. of the outside of the U.S. in the uh, seven years that you've been doing this, have you traveled outside uh, to the other countries to do work yet, uh, or is there a desire to? There's a huge desire to. I mean, um, I haven't yet. Uh, Mexico was in talks. Um, I hope that that goes through. Uh, the U.K. was in talks for a minute in the January, um, and I hope something like that happens, man, I'm, I'm down 110% to, you know, just to do it everywhere, man. Japan is the, uh, the end all be all. I think all of us say that I'm pretty sure that come, you know, that do this Japan would be phenomenal. Um, the hopes and dreams. <laughs> well, well, if you're ever through Canada, make sure to give us a call because we, uh, we uh, help run a uh, local promotion here, so I'm sure we could get you on a few circuits out this way. Get out of here. <laughs> I would love that, man. That would be amazing. Canada's always been one of the coolest places I always thought, so that'd be really cool. I'm yeah. serious. And we'd have to drink some beer while we're there. Oh, hell yeah, man. That, that's, <laughs> that's all we do here in our spare time. So. It's all I do most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> you you so would I make a perfect to Canadian that. then. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm chill and I drink beer all the time. Oh, and I like hockey. I don't know. Dude, dude, shit, yeah. Are you sure you're not born here? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bob, folks. Oh uh, yeah, I I was wondering what's what's in the future for Bud Heavy. What kind of ideas do you have for uh, titles or uh, uh, bookings you want to get in Florida or elsewhere? Uh, do you have a, a long term plan or an end game? Uh, dude, really. In game is, is is to be contracted, um, and and MLW right now is is um, it's the home. Uh, I feel like you know there's something I don't know what it is. I couldn't tell you, uh, <laughs> but I'm hoping that you know they can uh, make something happen. You know, because I'm down. Um, the other indie goal wise man is GCW. Uh, game changer is the is the big goal. Um, I got a lot of friends that are on there. So I'm like, you know, hey, hook a brother up. But, you know, it's <laughs> tough. Um, it's tough out there, you know. Everybody's fighting for bookings, and I understand it. But that's probably one of the biggest goals is, uh, is the contract and, and, and GCW. Man. Those are the two right now. Um, I don't ever really see myself um, – I, I don't try to plan too far ahead because uh, then I just disappoint myself. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> – exactly man and, and uh you know everything i've done is past what i wanted to do so my wife always makes that point to me because i'll get disappointed and she's like you do know when you started wrestling you just wanted to do it you know once maybe twice a month and then it just got you know obviously that doesn't happen once it bites us it bites us hard and now we're stuck <laughs> so she's like remember you've already had your goal made so stop freaking out about other things you know everything so, everything now is over and above anyway so it's all good yeah, exactly. Like everything's everything's just extra points now. <laughs> <laughs> so, quite clearly, Bud Light favorite go to for beer. Yep, yep, dude. Um, I don't know why either. I couldn't tell you. It's not the best beer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's always the name, there. <laughs> it does, and it's it's funny because that's how it, that's how it happened. Was you know we were sitting there and I was drinking one night and somebody was like, you know, you're kind of chunky, and I laughed. You know, I was like, yeah, I know. And I was like, it's all the bud. And then they're like, yeah, the bud's making you heavy. And then someone's like, how bud heavy? And then I was like, oh my God, <laughs> wait a minute. And I was like, that's genius. And then it just stuck. And so someone was reading a comment on, on YouTube the other day, or no, on Twitter. 
somebody's like, I hate that his name is a fat joke. And I was like, well, I named myself that. <laughs> I'm like, I, I'm okay with it. <laughs> well, then what's the issue? <laughs> yeah, I didn't see, you know, because I, I get it, you know, like if somebody else named me, I might be bad, but like I totally came up with it. And like, I mean, I know the reason I'm fat is because I drink so much beer <laughs> so, and I ain't stopping. So, <laughs> yeah, whatever. You're doing exactly. what you love and you get to drink at the same time. So, fuck it. Who cares? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> who cares? Right. Yeah. Exactly. I'm, I'm hoping, you know, that's what they wanted to do on MLW, though. They're like, dude, just be bud, man. Just, just you know, always, always be around with a beer in your hand and always have fun. And I'm like, dude, you're just asking me to be me. That's easy. <laughs> I got this. You, you, you can know? get paid to drink beer and take an ass kick. And I mean, that's a, that's a dream come true, if you ask me. Right. Exactly, man. And, you know, like, it's the thing, too, about like, uh, somebody asked me that, too. They were like, um, how does it feel uh, every match you've been booked in you? you lost and i was like guys like i'm kind of still there yeah <laughs> i don't you know i don't really care i'm still there like i don't really know what to tell you <laughs> i think too many people get hung up on that and stuff like that too like i remember some of the standouts for me as a kid in the 90s and stuff were the guys that didn't pick up all the wins all the time i liked seeing these guys and rooting for the underdog and stuff i knew there was probably no chance i'd see them pick up a victory but something inside of me wanted to tune in every time just in case that guy was going to take the win and hey that's that's what you are and you know at the same time that's why it picked up for us we saw you there and we liked what you were doing we love the name the name stood out for us too and everything and awesome. just just the fun that you're having at the same time man that's the kind of shit we really enjoy and why we wanted to reach out at the same time too so yeah you know that's what it was all about for me it was like i i you know even just like bud himself like his you know it I wanted him to be accessible. Like I wanted everybody to feel like they could be Bud. You know, like I'm not shredded. You know, I I I, I look pretty average, um, <laughs> except for the tan. I mean, I'll be honest, but <laughs> but I look pretty average. And um, and I was like, you know, I just want everybody to feel like, you know, hey man, if I ever had the dream to be a pro wrestler, like I don't have to stop drinking beer and look like freaking Roman Reigns. You know, not that I wouldn't want to look like that, but <laughs> we'll, we'll leave that up to him. <laughs> yeah, right. We'll leave that side of the game to you, buddy. I'll enjoy my beer over here. That's you know, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Bob Smokes, you got some more for us? Well, I was going to say, do you remember Munson when we watched and reviewed uh, Filthy Island for yes. MLW? Yeah. <laughs> and we were, we were laughing about the setup and all that stuff. And then we said, look, that's Bud Heavy doing the music and the entrances over there. That was the first time we really had a good laugh about that. Yeah. How, how was that, by the way? Uh, it was hilarious. Um, they, they were just like, you want to be a DJ? And I was like, yeah, sure. And I'm thinking, like, a DJ. I didn't know what they meant, you know? Like, they didn't tell me exactly what's going on. They sit down and they hand me these cassette tapes, and I'm like, what the hell? And they're like, put them in the thingy and push play. And I was like, what are we, in the 90s? Like, hold on a second. Like, I don't think anyone even knows how these work anymore. And it was great. But then, you know, when the Von Erics came up in the Jeep, um, I was so upset. The camera angle they had, they almost hit me. They were like this close to hitting me. I dove out of the way last minute. My foot hit the tire. <laughs> they didn't catch it in the camera. I was oh, like, <laughs> that would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah, you would have been more of a hero than that boy, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, it was fun, man. And Tom seemed to have a blast with it. And uh, he, it was his choice. Apparently, he was like, you know, make fun the DJ. He fits the gimmick. I was like, it kind of does. <laughs> so, sure. <laughs> oh glad you glad you're having fun with it man we're enjoying it uh if Bob smokes any last questions you got no no you got anything bob no i got uh, nothing else but hey uh why don't you tell everyone uh listening uh where else they can find you uh where on social media they can find you and anything uh to look forward to yeah man it's, uh, it's on facebook it's bud heavy um on twitter it's bud underscore heavy uh everybody has trouble finding me because there's people that try to steal my shit <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, Instagram is Bud Heavy with two Y's. Because uh, again, everybody tries to steal my shit. Um, so, uh, and on the Facebook store, there's the t-shirts, man. You guys can you know, buy merch and stuff like that. Uh, hopefully, um, there'll be more to come. Uh, I'm hoping that MLW bites, man. And 
may something happen. So, you know, keep your eyes out. There's more coming. Um, I can tell you that much, but you know, yeah. Perfect. Well, we appreciate you being on the show here today. Uh, we're going to wrap this one up, but uh, thank you for sticking around, telling us all about you. And we look forward to the future with Bud Heavy. Everybody take care and have a great evening. When you go to the old saloon at the Dead South End, gonna find you a man there who wants to be your friend. If you dare to deny his wish, you'll be dead by dawn. So give him a drink and a smile and then move right on. Rednecks with white faces, don't go put no down. song.